starting the combat with the wolves. Just kicking the wolves in the dick. Right. Uh, Terror! It's a bunch of wolves. Um, Kill them. Can, can I just mention what I was thinking? Because I think I will forget. I'm, I'll forget this next week. Okay, what do you want? <laughs> Basically, um, we were all able to follow Oberon through the stone. So why don't I... If we know where some of those stones are, we know where some of these uh, these traveling uh, stones are. Why don't I travel find the ones, find certain ones? Because there might be one right friggin' here, right by the dwarves' place. Yes. Go there. Travel through it. Then and what? then we'd be able, to, we'd have access to it because I can travel back to it again, and, and you can come to me. What if there's a giant? Dire alligator no, no, no. with his mouth open on the I, other side I, I, of no, the no, no, <laughs> no, no, you're not getting it. I fly. A mum, a I mummy actually dire alligator. Just, uh, just travel. It's yes. one thousand year old ready to action. So I travel oh, to it. I try. I travel to it, and then I use the stone to come back to you guys. And they're like, "Oh, he's here." And then I travel back, like like a second later, and you all follow me in. And that way, we all now have access to it. You all know the place. Because we don't really know if they work that way. It did work that way. That's how it worked, out, worked last time. We were thinking of Obron, and we uh, boop, popped up where he was. Um, maybe. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start uh, doing some treasure. Um, okay. Treasure, uh, XP, yeah, treasure. Yeah, Oh god, XP. there's also that old place that we need to go to, the other dungeon. Uh, yes. Let's let's do let's do ex actually XP first because I'll, I'll forget if I if I leave that to later. Treasure I can pick away at uh, Legends campaign. Shoot. I mean, you know it's a Marty campaign when there's too many plot threads and too many dungeons to chase down all of them. Yeah, I kind of I kind of. That's like not a bad that. thing. It's yeah. not a bad thing. It's it's easy for me to disguise things in the busyness of of the world. Yeah. <laughs> well, it feels realistic, right? You can't solve all the problems. Uh, all right. Mark, are you doing all right? Yeah, I'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, what did you guys do tonight? Uh, Kick we, some we, fucking ass. Yeah, we took the keelboat. We crossed a river. <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, so, yes. oh, guys, chill down. We talked with the ch we talked with the uh, what's his name, the Lord, uh, the Earl, right? Yes. And we found out what was the note. Oh, the, right, right. Uh, you, 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 you actually. Forced him to kind of tell you what was on the what was on the uh, the demand brick that uh, Gren Celtic's daughter sent mm -hmm. him. Okay, that was worth some XP. You're going in dealing with the uh, dealing with the Arl that way. Uh, then you guys had a fun journey across the river. <laughs> yes. And then, sure, I've forgotten stuff. There and was some, we... there was some scouting. We we skirted. Mm -hmm. And then you chatted with the oh he was a really fun guy uh, Scab, Scab and and uh, Wilbur yeah and learned that just sinking the boat might have been bad <laughs> not not a bad thing for for your feelings <laughs> oh, no. and you know, for possible, alignments yeah for alignments and you know oaths um then you guys took the boat. In this really yeah you, you started the you started the uh how many orc sailors were there there were and let me switch to the map oof i don't know so, was it 20 or 30. Three, one two 20. three four five six seven seven sailors sailors and 14 warriors no, there's more than that. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot the prisoners. Yep. The prisoners, yeah. So that seven <clears throat> is added to ten, seventeen. Seventeen sailors. And uh, fourteen plus five, nineteen um, warriors. Do we get XP for forcing some of them to surrender? Yeah, you get XP for defeating each and every one of them. Nice. Uh, you get to feel morally superior. Uh, and then B Bubtar Shabugamu. Um, yeah. How about doing Great fantastic name. things like breaking the rudder and the uh, 
And yeah. the, the okay. ballista. We can do that. So breaking the ballista, yes, you get some XP for that. <laughs> That's fantastic. And then breaking the rudder, what was it? Basically a third level spell that allowed you to go and do these things? Pretty much. Okay. Uh, a bunch of thirds, yeah. A uh, third and some, some other stuff. Okay. Um, Crenshaw, there were six. Six of those. And then the leaders, we had two, two six brothers. level barbarians. Mm, that would have been fun. And then a bard and a ranger. A four and level I... bard and a seventh level ranger. And then a druid. The fifth level druid. Pansy. <laughs> Pansy? No, they just couldn't stand against uh, a Zildin's might. Uh, yeah, Zildin wasn't standing right in front of him either. <laughs> no, was he? <laughs> right. Uh, and he still got injured, Zildin. That was, uh, what, 21 damage that fight? That was, uh, yeah, 21. Yeah, that's quite a bit, actually. Taking the boat. And then rescuing 12 people. Destroying the evil shrine? Statue? 15 people. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes, 15 people. My bad. Give me a second. Children are people too! Uh, yeah. 3, 20, 32, <laughs> so I'm going to give you a bunch of CR 1 halves for saving the peoples, and then destroying the evil shrine is like a consecrated area. Okay. I'll give you some XP for that. Curing the fill fever? Uh, yes, there were 12 people that were... Stopping an infestation. Sure. Then the mystical, magical journey of capturing the boat without a crew. So cool. Uh, yeah, I, I have to, like, basically it was a third level spell, so that's, that's all treated as like a CR3 for a, a award for being cool. Um. Oh, the ballista. I didn't get that one. Yes, having the ballista attack a Zildin might have been bad for one shot. Um, yeah, it would have sucked, but they ain't bad. Drinking their true true strike potions right before they click the trigger on the ballista. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Um, a little bit of additional role playing with Ingrid. Um, buying stuff doesn't get UXP, although using it in cool ways will. Um... We're just collecting crap, like a boat. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of sick it's not even in the water. It's on the side. Well, it's it's, like it's all broken, right, right? It's like it's our boat, and it's this. Yeah, yeah. R right now, <laughs> we're thinking. Uh... Volkrick starting an armory, really, it's just the beginning of his hoarding sickness. And <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Don't throw it away, it's still good. Uh, what do you oh, Oberon, to... can I keep it? <laughs> right. I want to keep it. Um, I need the bigger loading straps so I can carry the elephant next. What did you want to call the downtime session? Which and what did you call the the one that we had on Tuesday? I didn't actually give it a name. Oh, um, relevation. My son beers. It's a it's uh, a re reference. If you saw the movie Good Dinosaur, it's from there. It's funny. Good Dinosaur? No. No, you mean no. That's the kind of thing you have to do. No, when I mean like... relevation. That's, what, that's I got the kind kids, of thing man. What, what, what I know exactly. I, I was gonna say you have kids. Yeah, I have no they idea what you're talking have about. Um, young children. <laughs> last game, what did you? Uh, it was uh, uh, downtime, and then Azildin's um, running around. Running around. Um, what, what what was what was important in that in that quest that you went that little side journey you went on, Mark? Uh, for the on Tuesday, uh, yeah, or we, Thursday. it was it was Thursday. It was just it was scouting the west. Uh, found uh, some landmarks, originally where we spotted the uh, fuel boat. And what the hell is my cat doing outside? And we. Uh, <laughs> All right. The 
corpse yep. of trees. The yeah, corpse of corpse trees. Of I'm trees. gonna call it the corpse of trees. That was the thing. It's like maybe I've gone too far. <laughs> right. Oh no! And then, and then the XP for tonight is significant. Uh, it is the second or third most amount of it. Nah, it's the third largest sum uh, for it for the session so far. There was a lot of enemies. Uh, and we've learned Lokrix kind of a suck when he doesn't get to play. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. He's a lawful good dwarf of a battle god. It's it's like he, he, he felt insulted when you guys uh, didn't make sure that he could go over there. Um, um, I tried to make him feel better. Yep. So he's, he's, collecting, he's collecting weapons now. Um, Maybe he should have longer legs. We could, I could break them and then stretch them and then let them grow and then break them Dwarven leg extensions? Yeah. Big bean, bean pole stock. Uh, and then tonight, what do you want to call it? Um, let's call it uh, emancipation. I like it. <laughs> or unconventional piracy. We did steal a ship. <laughs> yeah, Naval it was, warfare. It was more in the in the in the light of goodness. Um, or how about this? What we're attacking? <laughs> Honest piracy. <laughs> Miscommunication. <laughs> I think that's just a general theme for the campaign, or for the for the uh, for the characters. I think it's a general theme every, for every, every game we've ever played. <laughs> every game. Any campaign it's, it's, with it's any like characters. This, it's, it's like those frustrating plot lines. It's like if that dude just talked to that girl, and they fucking agreed not to freak out and do random shit, there would be no plot for this episode. You know, like had they yeah. had they actually, you know. Communicated effectively, there'd be no plot. Those ones annoy the, the fuck out of me. Beings do not ever behave. Right. Then, yeah. Yeah. The whole problem was you freaked out and did something stupid. Right. Great. The whole problem is that they're not symbiotic board hive minds. All right. So I'm going to. Um, <laughs> was there um, Scab and uh, Wilbur? Old Scab and Wilbur? Do they deserve the name of the the? Uh... With Wilbur, was it because Wilbur? We were looking up Mister Ed. Was that why Wilbur was on your mind? I, I I just randomly. I have no idea. It was like Wilson, but not Wilson. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's kind me, of that's that's more Wilbur's world. Wilbur's name the dude in Mister Ed show. It was just something I wanted something that was not orcish. That he ended up naming the orc skull, skull and then and then what was interesting is that there was no detect magic no detect evil so he could have just been a crazy old dude or he might have had some mojo behind his his <laughs> uh, and i like that that kind of skipped your minds because you were so enamored with uh with the dirty old man worm eaters well i, I can't run around detecting evil on everybody all yeah, the time true. i mean i mean I, I guess i could but but no, he usually was, he was batshit nuts Usually, I do. But you get fatigued, but then you took a power, so you can get rid of the fatigue. So then you could keep doing it. All right, we'll call it emancipation. I think that's the one that's, that's sticking. Yeah. Uh, Relevation. Relevation? No. You mean like revelation? No, no, I mean revelation. No, wait, relevation. You got good dinosaur. It's a good movie. It's funny. We'll it's relevated. I, I, I saw. So in case anybody's going to go see a movie. Um, no, my I wife got movies. tickets to uh, that stupid. Um, <laughs> You're already starting with a good, uh, uh, good life vibe there. Secret Life of Pets. It's the same studio that did Despicable Me. Oh yeah. And the movie is one of the worst piles of dog shit I've ever seen. Uh, and I own two dogs. Um, I see a lot of dog shit. In the preview, it looked funny. Well, so here's the thing. There's two good scenes in the movie. There's the opening scene, strong. The closing scene, strong. They have no plot. They're like little sort of acme skits from like uh, Looney Tune cartoons. Um, um, those two scenes are good. Everything else in the movie is terrible. The movie includes scenes of graphic torture what? and killing... <laughs> Like, like seriously, how do you like how do you torment someone to break their mind is part of the show, um, and no plot connection and like 
sudden random dream sequence out of nowhere. Mark's being attacked by summoned creatures. Summon kitty? Anyways, it's about pets. It's really not very good. You watch the first yeah. five minutes, the last five minutes, you got the best parts of the movie. I highly recommend you don't see the ghost shit. Well. They literally had to sue um, Bill Murray so that he would show up in that film. Yep. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, off the orcs, uh, you found um, 560 silver coins and uh, 20 composite longbow strength 12. Not masterwork. Uh, did you rob the sailors? I guess you did empty their pockets. So we'll add another... 300 silver coins, and do you want um, non masterwork slings and daggers? No, like, are you at really. are you kind of <laughs> collecting that shit at this point, or are you no? Okay, um, now from the named NPCs, those two barbarians, let's start there Gronk one, Gronk two, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, in amongst the crew, you find um, thirty wooden ho unholy symbols of bog true, and ten wooden unholy symbols of Groovesh. Um, do you care about javelins? <clears throat> I have like five I've never used, so no. <clears throat> Might as well collect them. They're kind of a useful thing for like defending Might as well walls. collect them, at least so, we can yeah. uh, okay. stack them up in... Uh, Ranged ammo Acropolis. and projectile things are good for the town. Um, uh, 40 javelins and 400 arrows. Okay. Yeah, you can. we can use that. Do you want slingstone bullets? Uh, yeah. 200 sling stone bullets. In fact, the uh, the slings keep those two. We're basically going to give them to the town guard. They had slings. For short distances, they're better than the Okay, so basically all, you can create a, a care package for the town guard. I'll add yeah. 50 daggers. Yeah, there you go. Um... You're, you probably burned the arm, like the leather armor that they were yeah, wearing. Like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not peeling that shit off. This well, guy, think about it. It's like three, three or four minutes work per dude. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, the main guy, his falchion. is magical. He had an, a, mag a magical amulet, and the armor nice. he didn't get to put on is plus two studded leather. Oh, nice. Um, there was also the, I think it was an axe, a spear, and a magic chainmail. Yep. So uh, this no, was there's three, three magic or... items. Yeah, three Blood magic tusk. items in the armory. Blood Tusk's moon is a plus one falchion. It grants a plus two uh, on confirmations to criticals. Right. That's a good weapon. And it, had, a and it has a, um, a large ruby in it. Uh, so, uh, what do we want to call this? It's almost like the bling on the blade. Um, uh, Plus 500 gold piece ruby in pommel. Gaudy blade of death. There is a um, a Voslandic battle axe, which is a plus one battle axe. 
cool. With, with a plus one to critical hit confirmations. Apparently these warrior cultures really know how to build their weapons to do maximum damage. To really uh, kill. <laughs> and then I said there was a spear in it, uh, in there. Wait, so? Okay. There was three items, a uh, chain shirt, spear, and, and a axe. Watch what I'm going to do with the spear. The spear is a long spear for a small creature. Uh, All right, let me garbage. use your fucking spear. It's the, uh, uh, we're going to call it uh, Big Sticker. Big Sticker. Woohoo! It's a plus one long spear, small. Thank you, Marty. Uh, and the puny it's pecker. Um, um, carved okay. with um, leafy designs. Does it allow you to enlarge the animals you summon? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Wait, wait. wait. Uh, and then, what was the third thing in the hold? Chain shirt. Oh, uh, so a plus one chain shirt. What's with my memory, guys? Ooh, we don't know. You, you don't have one because you've been taking care of your kids all day. Which means no, you know, I'm, I'm remembering stuff. Oh, it's actually functioning? That means you've been up for more than 36 hours straight and you're about to I have! <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Blood Tusk's Leather gives a plus two competence <laughs> bonus to intimidate checks. Nice. Oh, nice. Very nice. Okay, so Uker, get that feat that lets you use your strength to intimidate. But Uker's a nice, happy guy. Doesn't want to be scary. You just do it without meaning to. Uh, the, studs, hey, the studs have little skulls, like they're carved into little silver silver skulls all around the... Uh... How come we're not using the bronze disc of the twin gods? We should be using that. I don't know. What, is it, what, what does it do again? It does some awesome things. It makes Abelman even it. more archery. Um, blood this is true. Tusks um, Amulet is a plus one amulet of... Uh, of natural armor. Awesome. <clears throat> and uh, he also had a strange belt that he was not wearing because he just got out of bed. Druid's belt of enlarged summoned animals? Mm, not quite. <laughs> Although I'm seeing the pattern. <laughs> it's called the Victor's Belt. It gives a plus two morale bonus to all CMB and CMD. Cool. I have a CMB. As so a I. as a Dibs. standard action, you can cast Rage on yourself once per day. What? Nice. That's, That's cool. really cool. I can if you already rage have on it. Myself. And then the quirk <laughs> is whenever whenever the wearer takes amount of damage equal to at least half his hit points in a single round there's a 50% chance that the belt activates its rage ability automatically. Oh. Cool. That's good. It's not bad. I mean, it's not great. We stick it on the paladin. This will be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I killed the puppy. <laughs> so, the victor's belt. Puppy was evil. Oh. Plus two CMB, plus two... It's a morale bonus to CMB. Which is pretty pimp. Uh, yeah, does a stack of Bard song, but it's good. Or does it stack with Bard song? Does it, it, stack, it, would, it doesn't uh, stack with good heroism. Yeah. Yeah. And then awesome. once per day, rage spell. Uh, so it's a standard action. I want it. 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 And the uh, at the caster level is five. And then uh, if if you take the quirk is if you take. Uh, fifty percent of your hit point, uh, your normal hit point total, in one round. Good luck. I'm behind seven proxies. There is a fifty percent chance. You ought to rage. That the rage activates automatically. Does it activate automatically if it's already been used? No. Or... Okay. Actually, no, no, it has to have the charge. As long as the charge still exists. Um, yeah, as long as... So I spend my moment of rage every morning. <laughs> that... Um... 
What's he doing? Oh, he's just I'm doing awake. meditation. I'm so awake. <laughs> Use it to feverishly pleasure yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone get me so good to be awake. <laughs> well, just just imagine you put on this piece of clothing, and it makes you feel like just like like crazy powerful um uh there's i, I was reading through um so my leather pants do to me i was i was reading through an article um uh where it's like what if uh what if healing magic was addictive it was yeah. kind of a neat a neat concept but i had a, I had a fun <laughs> crack dealer. there was a there was a All fun right, guys, who's um, <laughs> 3.5 um setting called iron kingdoms which is based on the war machine Privateer Press War Machine game, mm -hmm. where they made healing necromancy. And they made necromancy take a toll on your body. Nice. So healing magic doesn't happen very often, especially especially like resurrection, because people who do it end up basically withering away and dying from overusing it. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> hmm. The woman was wearing plus one leather armor. Um... She had a masterwork hand axe. Okay, now it's the Barbarian Brothers that I want to have a look at. <clears throat> How much XP did we get? 5,800. Oh, okay. Are we leveling again? No, no, no. no. That's to the 1.5 multiplier? Yep. Did we officially level to six properly this time? Uh, I'd have to look. Meta logs. No. You're about two grand. It's still in the hole. Okay. We are two. We're two grand to what? You're two grand to six level. Seven. What? I multiplied the the XP chart by one and a half. Oh, oh, we gave you, you gave us six. You should have actually leveled, but I, I let you level because I was changing the rules kind of midstream. So, right, um, right, uh, got yes. it. So yeah. we're still gonna gain. Okay, that's cool. We're gonna yeah. gain six and then look at seven. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just just that conversation is we adopted a very slow XP rate, um, uh, which essentially puts people at a level behind. Just to kind of slow it down, because there's lots of things to be done in this in this campaign. Oh, we're burning. We're burning, what, every two level two games we were leveling? Yeah. E even on slow, you level pretty quickly early on, though. So. Mm -hmm. uh, well, get, think about the, not like the, what we can go through with that. Oh, the, true, oh. true. Oh, yeah. Uh, and test. it's actually only going to get worse, because as we increase in Mythic rank, you eventually get to a point where you can spend a Mythic point... And replenish all of your um, abilities and spells as if you had rested. Mm -hmm. What level, what tier is that? I think it's like third or fourth. Oh, crap. I, I'm, no, I think I'm that's taking a that. That's a what? I thought it was like eighth. I don't know it if it's that far along. The, uh, the first one is to be like you get to rest for hit points. I don't think you have powers back. That's an, a really powerful ability. I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, That's, no, it's at, it's, it's at, it's at third level. I ran out of time before I ran out of spells. You heal completely casting. and regain all of your um, all of your. That's one features. mythic point for one hour. Yeah. Barbarians. Let me think about that dual caster level. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's seriously, it's like oh, we blew through everything. Okay, give us an hour. Okay, we're right back on top. Let's do it again. <laughs> so, so if, I think for me, it's so yeah. It's you need to still rest for an hour. Yeah. 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 But you spend a mythic point, yeah. rest for an hour, that's, heal that's completely, regain all of your abilities and spells. So, yeah, so does. guerrilla warfare, fireball, 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 fireball. I'm out. I'm gonna go rest for an hour. Huh. Come back, fireball, 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 fireball. <laughs> right. Of course, that means our enemies can do the same thing. So. Yeah, that's what Uker is for. Coming to fireball, Uker throws a mountain at them. Two mountains. He's no chump. <laughs> He's got two hands. <laughs> right? <laughs> two uh, hands these guys 
didn't carry magic weapons. They just carried a lot of oils of magic weapon. They were cheap. Fuckers. So six oil of magic weapon. Caster level five. Uh, how is it that your characters know what this treasure is that you found? Is my identify spell use? Oh yes, yes. Uh, yes, it is. Um, we have... our wizard has uh, identified as one of his standard yeah. spells that he's prepared. Yeah. We we, we kind of end a game um, instead mm -hmm. of it, the wizard is also an NPC. Um, so basically, what we'll what we'll say is that after a suitable amount of time has gone by, he'll be able to look at these things. Now, when he has time, so his, um, uh, the, the formula is 10 plus double caster level of the item. His maxed out ranks in um, uh, spellcraft are really high. He gains plus two for being elven. And then plus 10, if he uses the, the identify spell, he has something like eight of them that he could cast per day from his two spell pools. Oh yeah, we're um, mythic. <laughs> an and then it, if he comes across something that he finds difficult, he's got a power called Display of Intelligence, which adds a d20 20. to that roll by use of one of his mythic points. No, it's actually just a splat it's 20. Oh, it's, 20. It's just a rock plus 20. So um, there's nothing in here that's like above caster level 5. Like plus 1 weapons are kind of like it's caster level 3 or like 8. It's, it's, I think it's 3. So, um, yeah, that it's it's not very difficult for him to spend a few seconds with each item. Um, if this was a player that was doing the uh, the identification, I would have taken, you know, gone through the steps of letting them look at it and roll. But uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna fold some time. I'm not gonna. If he came across something really big, then there may be a little bit more of a. A mystery around it they've already and found there's... they've already found artifacts that they have no idea what they do and they're doing that sort of investigate investigatory uh like playing with the item i already know what hammer does it is <laughs> paper <laughs> yeah for example oh, it down paper. Like, stop playing with as, the artifact so, 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 so for example for example let's do the victor's belt it's caster level five to figure what it is so 1d20 plus that's dc 25 uh 1d20 plus 14 is uh that sounds about right for a wizard of this level. Plus or, 10 uh, with identify. Uh, so plus 1d20 plus 24. No, um, he's at plus 15 at 6th level. He gains plus so, 2 for elves, because elves gain plus 2 to identify uh, the effects of items. items. And then he casts identify, and that's a plus 10. So Oops, he rolled a 38. Um, he literally can't fail on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Marty, can you show so, so one it's of a good our point. Uh, I, it's, I'm sheets. assuming somebody. I'm assuming somebody on the stream asked. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Can, uh, can you show question. one of our character sheets to see just like so the level of detail that we keep track of our characters very briefly? I think mm -hmm. one of our uh, viewers would be very interested in seeing it. Uh, Sir Thomasin. Sir uh, Thomasin. Sorry, I can't, I can't read. <laughs> Three a.m. Where I am. We use uh, we use OneNote. Uh, it's kind of a free form character sheet that we create. Um, uh, we we add quotes up at the top, so like, you know, if I if I switch into uh, Oberon's voice, it's like I trust you have an adequate excuse for this intrusion, one that trumps the unraveling of the mysteries of the multiverse. Well, go on, <laughs> and then he's spoken before about to become the mage of magi, the wizard of wizards. He he's got a he's got a, a desire to become really powerful. So a little bit about them, what what tier that they've gone up in, um, where they're from, the house that he's from, some background about about uh, Oberon. All the character sheets, I think around level four or five, are actually on the website diedragondie.com. So go click around in there, and you can you can find them. Um, we'll I think periodically post these sheets, um, and then we've got yeah, basic combat saves and, and basically all the stuff from from the character sheets themselves. Uh, things that we've added in this campaign, we did some sort of like a background uh, skills, um, and then their gestalt. Um, so I've been playing with these these guys for years and years and years, and they said, Marty, we want to play a mythic campaign where our characters are like superheroes of characters. I'm like, okay, so we'll do true gestalt, and then we'll do mythic on top of that. So some of the mundane things that low-level adventurers 
have to do and and just and so this comes out exactly with your example um like rolling to see if they know what the item is that's a really low level item i i i was poor in describing it to to begin with but i knew that the numbers were just like there was no point in in spending time um yeah, yeah. this isn't like a nitty gritty campaign it's not the Keep no. track of every ration, and keep track of every torch type thing. We, though, we, though we do track that stuff. It's, it's, they asked me yeah. for a different style of campaign. So we, We've um, definitely done the nitty gritty campaign mm -hmm. in the past, but this is the epic level superhero science of the gods adventure. So, Yeah, yeah. They're taking on things that are way beyond their level because well, they're we bought, more what, powerful than they 12 are. Dragon a couple of adventures ago? Uh, yeah, your fourth level. That <laughs> was one, ridiculous. That one was a ridiculous fight. Yeah, that was uh, very yeah. close. Where we lost two, uh, two, two animals companions, and yeah. companions. Yeah. So uh, they 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 begged for mythic, and I said, okay, fine. But that means that there will be mythic challenges out there where the mundane challenges are, might not do. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like you know, if you if you watch some of the previous videos, you saw us tear through a literal army of orcs without really taking much in the way of damage. Um, you know, we brought down a couple giants. We mm -hmm. fought... I'm, I'm trying to think, like, what the biggest thing we fought so far is the most dangerous thing. I think it's pretty much that dragon, but, but we took down a CR-12 dragon that had help in a situation that was actually advantageous to it. <laughs> and all we lost then, was a couple animal so, companions. So, so just to kind of give you an idea of, like, how much stuff we rely on OneNote... So we've got like some meta information about rules that we've used. We've got our uh, our cardinal code of conduct that we made that we made uh, <laughs> reference to at the beginning of the game. No touching, uh, no drinking, um, no games. <laughs> no. <laughs> awesome. There are character sheets. There's there's information about the worlds themselves. So here's the player version of the write up about rune shod, so they can go there and look at see what's. Um, see basically bookkeeping for who's who and what's what yeah uh, and then the loot is all being just pasted into a big one note and then the players themselves can um uh, uh divvy up things that they need so this is where i'm kind of typing out what what it is that they found um and yeah, they're, I mean, kinda, I'm... they're not going to hand it off to them and like okay this is the stuff that you guys have uh feel free to to start giving it so yeah. probably throughout the week will the characters or the players usually mark what they want and um, this good, this good party seems to be really, really laissez-faire with their divvying of treasure. They kind of go, well, you need this, and they kind of make sure that it's spread around. I've seen other games where it's like everyone's appraising the individual items and making sure that everyone gets an equal share, and so there, there's maybe there's that's a, how the neutral party will go. Maybe that's how the neutral party of pirates yeah, will, party will be like. Likely no, no, no. Like we, we liquidate everything and give you the exact share that you're due. <laughs> <laughs> Arr. Arr. Yeah, yeah. Pirate shares. Delta plus two strength. <laughs> yep. Um, so I, are you it. are you interested in masterwork weapons? I guess so, right? So there's. I mean, they're valuable. To they masterwork. will be used. And and there's there's some use. Great axes. Economy. Um. Yep. Yeah, Thomas. And so one of the other things too is that as I'm I'm the newest member of the group, if, if you didn't know, and I found that over time. As we do campaign after campaign, we introduce new concepts, new ideas, new house rules, um, <laughs> and do things differently because we realize that, you know, something didn't work. It didn't work as well as we wanted previously. Or <laughs> no we had copper some piece new... left behind. Right, <laughs> exactly. No <laughs> copper piece left behind. Um, That's so true. But, uh, we keep track was, of copper. It was the bucket of silver. <laughs> so so the, the chest of silver in, in the locked area was, was 2,000 silver coins. So. But there's a lot of there's a lot of experimentation that goes on with these games. I mean, the previous one we did, um, we played around with the concept of kingdom building, oh, and the man. whole adventure was based around kingdom building, which we then realized didn't work as well as we had hoped out of the box, and needed some tweaking, and some tweaking was done, and and we've kind of come around to reimagining that in, in you know currently, but but so, uh, so the Pathfinder um, uh, kingdom building rules were were really interesting and compelling for us to use and we played this campaign for almost two years but the spreadsheet the spreadsheet i don't know how you could keep track of it without one it was, if you were it just was, doing it by hand it would be it would be absurd couldn't. adam it, it and just, i spent hours not fun building the spreadsheet so that we can so that everything added up right yeah um, um 
uh, within uh, within Kingdom because every Ultimate hex... campaign yeah. is pretty cool. I have a lot of great ideas, but the Kingdom building rules are just clunky. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, you know what? I don't have time to learn this. <laughs> well, and, and and that was the thing. It, it ended up being we, we took it very seriously at first. And then eventually we kind of let it fall into the background because it was more fun to go adventuring. Yep. Now, to be fair, having your own kingdom creates a huge variety of yeah, that was fun of, of quest you know quest hooks and, and, and plot hooks yeah. and stuff like that. You have a reason uh, we, to care about something. You can't just run away from your problems. You have to we should actually it. stream a show where we just sit down and we do a uh, post mortem of the symbols gift. Uh, uh, that would actually campaign. be pretty cool. I think because yeah. I think there's like a hundred things we could talk about there. We learned a lot from that game. I think. Yep, and then and then um, so I even I didn't learn anything. At, Paizo, <laughs> at PaizoCon last year, not the one that just happened, but last year, um, Lisa, I believe, is the the CEO. She she talked about um, Pathfinder games and she giggled and almost made reference to the same thing. It, it ended up being two people hunched over a spreadsheet. While everyone like they they spent their lunches basically managing this kingdom, uh, while other people ha had really nothing to do because some of the kingdom roles are just like oh, oh I get yeah. to roll my d twenty once and that's my decision for the yeah what I, what I end up as a warden or something and it's like literally my only job was to decide when new settlements were created which rarely it ever happened and it wasn't something up for debate once we decided to do it because it was such a huge investment of resources and, and then what was really weird was they wanted to be adventurers so they're kind of like torn between well i want to stay home and run the kingdom no i want to go and solve the problem on the border <laughs> and then yeah. there was one there was one game where it was almost tpk and then they had to go t tuck their tails between their legs and go talk to their liege lord from a, d a distant kingdom uh, that that kind of seeded this. And basically, colony. somebody else took over the. And, and and the Lord went, well, what are? And we all laughed about it because it's like, well, what else are we supposed to do? But the Lord said, well, why are you sending your Lord, your leader, out into the cave where the monsters are? No, 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 he's bad, bad, bad. Disabler. According to. <laughs> According to his words, yeah. bad, bad, bad. But he's our rogue. It's yeah. like, uh, uh, I'm like, okay. Oh, so, so it's like they they tried to mash kingdom building with D and D, and I and I think there were some things they touched on, at that managing a kingdom is neat, uh, but one of the things that didn't work was was the leaders not your managers are not adventurers. <laughs> the right. Leaders so wanted our, to be adventurers. So our stopgap solution for that, which actually worked pretty well, is we divided up. Uh, roles and basically everybody two characters, one of which ended up on the leadership council and one of which ended up in the knights. Mm -hmm. The knights were supposed to be the de facto adventurers and the leadership council was supposed to take care of the more political things. And they um, both, that actually, both groups decided on kingdom on, related... Yeah, well, sure, sure, but I mean it was supposed ideas. to be kingdom tied back, tied back to the beginning, but it actually worked pretty well, I thought. I, it, it seemed like a lot of bookkeeping, but when you have one note, it's really not that bad. Um, and being able to have your adventurer group and your sort of your your leadership group do different things and kind of switch back and forth. It created a very Game of Thrones esque yeah, you know, series of was. plot threads. It, it was. It was. It was. Awesome. There was a lot of I mean we we're mostly neutral in the in the in that group for the most part. Most yep. of the characters were neutral. Um, and there was a really big schism between law and chaos, more so than good and evil, which was very interesting and, and, and lots of different things happened because of that. We had a lot of great scenes and encounters and, and conflicts. So so um, let's talk about this campaign or well. this campaign world. Like I know it's many worlds, but this sort of universe that we've created. <laughs> so we've created these really good characters, right? And yeah. they're, and they're kind of they're becoming proto mythical beings almost by going up in mythic paths. I have an idea where okay, the good guys are going to go off and do things and try to save worlds, and you could go watch all the bad the backstories to see you know how fucked up each of the uh, the worlds that they came from are you know like and eventually they're going to go and do this. I think that there's going to be a neutral party out there, and the neutral party is going to be a bunch of scalawag ne'er do well pirates, uh, uh, and and that's that's going to in the same multiverse kind of universe, but they'll be kind of off to the side doing their neutral thing. And then I don't know if we'll do this or not, but we might. It depends how far the overall stories go. Um, we'll may delve into an evil group. Evil, that, evil, that, evil. 
And then it'll be fun. There isn't. There's a few ideas that I've got where how do you thread all three of these things together? And um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the the fun. But a th another thing that we've started picking away at is Marty's got some ideas on how to fix kingdom building. Um, and I think what um, I I, th I think what we're gonna do is actually place that on one of the worlds, so that not only are we we play testing Marty's rules for kingdom building, but we're also creating story that eventually these other disparate groups might encounter and and go and, and inter interact with. Um, so. so the this is a this is a concept here. right. This is a concept that Marty and I and, and Adam I believe have, have thrown around for a while, and recently we uh, picked up the game Stellaris by Paradox Interactive, oh, um, okay. which is a fantastic sci-fi 4x game. Um, but the thing that Marty and I were struck by as playing this game is that there's so much minute like minutia, little details that exist within sort of the random generation of what could happen when you go to a planet or, or an advance or whatever. And everything sort of unfolds organically. I mean, it's not perfect by any degree. There's plenty of bugs. It's, it's a relatively new game. Mm -hmm. But, but if things unfold organically, and you can't help but play and see these things unfolding and in your head kind of see this narrative that's happening on its own. I've seen a couple of articles now where people tell the story of their spacefaring race, exactly. and it's kind exactly. of like, and then this cool thing happened, and we had to change, and then this cool yeah. thing happened, and we really yep. got screwed over, and then we had our righteous victory in the end, yeah. and everyone yep. sell like like, and you can. Hear I've seen them. I've seen a number of yeah. these, and they're and, and they're great. It inspires this sort of storytelling through this kind of high level description of what's going on that's being abstracted on some. On some, um, you know, in some way, and so the concept of using an empire building system to develop the history of a civilization or whatever, I think, is really fantastic. Um, and and Stellaris just kind of proved that that works really well. Yeah, um, but there are some, and I think I think the critique of the Pathfinder system is worth of like a full hour talking about, not just kind of jamming oh, it through yeah, right now. Definitely. Uh, but but I think what we're going to do is um, we'll save that, and then we'll talk about after we've play tested a few times the empire or kingdom building system that that we're kind of tinkering around with yeah. and then kind of show it off maybe um again we don't do any of this for for money we kind of just love D and d games so it's what i do it's what, what i do on my weekends willingly right, right exactly well do on weekends and then i think about like, my I, girlfriend grudgingly suffers through my my time <laughs> this constant hamster wheel of like, oh, I gotta watch this movie because it'll be good inspiration for yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the other thing too, right? Is <laughs> when you play D and D or Pathfinder as much as we do, it's not hard to when you see something immediately start drawing the parallels, right? You yeah. watch, like you watch that's Guardians true. of the Galaxy or something, and it's like, well, this is clearly somebody's space RPG yeah. campaign. <laughs> Look at these wackadoodle characters and their like crazy fucking abilities and conflicts. <laughs> of course, and of they're course, all and kind of. Like right. the same sort of power. Oh, they're an adventuring party yeah. in space. Okay, exactly. Got it. They're an adventuring party in space. It makes perfect sense. Um, so anytime I see like a film or a TV show where that's where that's apparent, it kind of makes me Excuse chuckle me. a little bit, and, mm. and <laughs> I start thinking about what class those characters are. <laughs> <laughs> cool guys. For those that have uh, that have joined us on on Twitch, any um, any requests for the campaign in general, just send us a note. Um, if you'd like to see more or less of something, let us know. Yeah, uh, we're, please. We're, this, more is, this, is our, this is our first streamed <laughs> game, so we're kind of feeling out what works or not. I have a suspicion that Pathfinder is too crunchy for a, a good streamed game. Uh, we might not ever get lots of. Uh, um, it's it's super nerdy and it's super uh, crunchy it's very compared difficult. to a five E. Five E, I, I notice, goes a lot quicker, and you get to the RP scenes uh, very quickly. Uh, and pa and combat seems to be really streamlined. So yeah, it all uh, depends on if you like combat or yeah. RP. So I think we'll just stream this campaign as is, uh, but we we can tweak content and and like show more or less of things. So just let us know. Yeah, uh, we, we we will listen and consider. Um, so cool. let us know if you like seeing huge numbers. I like seeing big numbers. <laughs> oh, I used to joke which, that I used to joke that. that D and D is basically just a bunch of guys getting together and shouting and screaming about numbers, getting really excited about numbers. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, right. numbers. Uh, there are some, 
Um, I am running a few modules that are kind. I kind of try to disguise the modules, but it's obvious when you start to see maps that that are obviously not. Eh, it's, things it's not that, that obvious. Made. I don't go around reading modules. So I don't know. What uh, but there is one kind of in behind, and I, I kind of kind of laid it out as they can they can pursue this stuff as much as they want, but they've obviously got other things that they want to do, and then there's their whole backstories and. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly how the campaign is going to go. I know if, if you take certain turns and deem certain things important over others, then I kind of have a vague sense of where it goes. But uh, there are a couple of devices, story devices, that once you, once they're truly introduced, I, I, I will have a hard time predicting without, without really controlling in a DME sort yeah. of way uh, where the campaign is going to go. So it should be fun. It should be a fun. Uh, should be a fun adventure. We'll do intergalactic Lewis and Clark. Screw you, Marty. Intergalactic. We'll go find. We'll go find Lewis some other uh, unsettled world, and we'll just adventure there. Yeah. <laughs> Random world generator. Oh, Random Lewis world and Clark, generator. not Lois and Clark. Okay. I was oh, thinking, I didn't. I was thinking Superman. I'm, for a second. Uh, I'm like Krypton. Like what? Yeah. I am. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to I, I'm from the Pacific right. Northwest, so Lewis and Clark is one of our cultural folk heroes. Because they uh, have statues of them or something. Because yeah. they found this fucking place, I guess. I don't okay. know. Yeah. Spell Spelljammer. Yes. Yeah, Spelljammer is pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. But it is pretty cool. To be fair, we have kind of explored that concept before in previous campaigns. Um, the Void Whale, for example. Um, yeah. That's uh, definitely something we kind of... It's a little spell jammery. A little spell jammery. Yeah, they found a flying whale. I think it's called a Moa or a... Or a no, it's called an Oma. The space awesome. fearing whale. It's an Oma and they, Pathfire. Yeah. Oma. Yeah. And, and then they, and then they um, climbed inside the whale and traveled between two planets. Yeah, and that was very spell jammery. That's very cool. Very cool. Yes. Right. Okay. So, uh, any shoutouts before before we end the stream? I th I think this is good. We we did treasure. We did XP. Yeah. We've had some cool conversations. Uh, it's about midnight here on the on the Pacific coast. I could keep on going, but we've got people on the East Coast. Mark, Adam, we gotta go to bed. Uh, it's three in the morning for them. Um, cool that you guys can do this every Saturday with me. It's lots of fun. But uh, yeah, so that's Bye my show to you guys. Thanks. And for the people on the stream... Thomason, I... thanks for joining us. Yes. Cyrix, as yeah. always, our, our constant fan. Well, yes. I know you're not online right now, but you'll probably watch this later. Thanks for joining, as always. Yeah. Um, Thomas, we'll other, see you again soon. The other couple see folks you. that popped on for a little bit, that was great to see you. Yeah, it was fun, guys. Cool. Uh, the uh, I, Was it session... Remind me again, session four or five in our uh, YouTube archive, the one that we attacked... Or we defended the town. That's the best one I think to see. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, that was a good one. In terms of action, yeah, it's just nonstop fighting the whole time. It's great. Yeah, it's great. You see, Hundreds see, of orcs. I don't, I don't enjoy the fighting as much as you guys do. Um, it's because I, we're bloodthirsty monsters. Well, you, well, it's it's good. It's good to break it up. But but I really enjoyed. <laughs> I can't discuss it anymore. I'm tired. The conversation shit. I gotta with, go. <laughs> with the with the old guy, and I really enjoyed the interaction with the mother. Those, those types of scenes. I really are... enjoy the RP and the in the combat, uh, but when RP and combat come together and people make suboptimal decisions for character reasons, Asseldin, that's where uh, things really backstory. just. Uh... <laughs> hey, Asaldin's backstory. It it looks like looks like Asseldin's nature's backstory is hilarious. Mark, it looked like nature um, um, leached a few uh, levels out of you, like negative energy. Um, <laughs> you took some energy levels. <laughs> you okay, man. You've been, you've been kind of heads down for. No, he's for a an he's a now. '90s Nickelodeon villain who hates uh, hates nature. <laughs> Just wants to cover Get everything. You, Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, Andrew. Oh, Planet Heart. <laughs> 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 all right guys okay uh, yeah, next right. week same same time same place yeah. same bat um, channel yes i'm out of here guys good night all right take I'll it easy bye, -bye. bye.